This is Twit. Give us the 30,000 foot view. What would people be reaching for when they're saying, I got to use Tari for this? Uh, so Tari is a uh, digital asset uh, focused protocol project. So the whole idea is to reimagine and re-envision how digital assets, you know, as you said earlier, things like concert tickets, loyalty points, and game items are issued and managed. So today you have a world where all these sort of digital assets are issued on uh, a centralized basis in these sort of walled gardens. Or once they're issued, there's no sort of control uh, from the issuer. Uh, so, for example, a concert ticket, once a concert ticket is sold, if it's a paper ticket or even if it's a digital ticket, they have no they have no ability to control what happens to that ticket after the fact. So there's a lot of really interesting business problems that can be solved if you use sort of a blockchain system as sort of the, the underlying layer. So, for example, in the ticketing business, one of the biggest problems is the fact that the original economic participants in the sale of a ticket to the venue, the promoter, the artist or team don't benefit when their tickets are resold. Um, that's uh, like an eight billion dollar plus uh, industry ticket resale. So imagine a world where they could issue tickets, they could set rules around those tickets, say they want a percentage of the revenue every time the ticket is resold, and they could trust that the network will help enforce uh, those rules. Um, and then there are other issues like, you know, having something that's truly digitally scarce is really valuable. So, you know, you can eliminate counterfeits, eliminate double spend. And there and there's some other really, really cool things you could do from a business standpoint, issuing your digital assets on something like the Tari network. Yeah, I, there was a whole episode on NPR, on, I think on Planet Money, the podcast, uh, talking about that, how Taylor Swift was actually producing tickets to guarantee a certain level of revenue and things like that. But, I mean, what's the problem with that? I mean, I go to Ticketmaster, which I can say out loud because they were a client of mine at one point, right, and a competitor <laughs> of what you're doing, But and I, and I buy a ticket. And then I sure. uh, either I get a code or I get something I have to print out or whatever, and then I take that to the venue and I've got it. So... What problem is this part of it solving? Well, so the people who take the risk to put on a show are the promoter and the artist and the venue. And so, you know, you have this entire secondary market that's sort of proliferating out there. They're just not able to participate in that. So from, from their point of view, from the digital asset issuer's point of view, it would be great if they can participate. So today you have a situation where these secondary market sites where people trade concert tickets, for example charge a really high fee. They charge upwards of 25% split between buyer and seller. How cool would it be if you could shift some of that value, some of that revenue from the secondary market back to the people who are actually putting on the show? You know, the artist, the venue, the promoter, the sports team, you know, these people that work really, really hard to put on an incredible show, in our view, should be able to benefit from that. You know, so at the end of the day, the idea of someone who's an intellectual property owner, whether it's a, a game publisher or an artist or whoever it is, they should be able to govern and control what happens with their their IP, you know, their their work product. So really the idea is this sort of a system helps them do that. And then there's other things. So for example, you know, I don't know when the last time you went to a concert, like last time I went to a concert, you know, I, I get this barcode, this QR code. And once the show is done, it's useless to me. You know, so yeah. to me, I had an incredible experience. So it has a lot of intrinsic value, but that's it. So the cool thing about tokenizing tickets or tokenizing in-game items or whatever is you can do all sorts of things after the fact. So you could you could use the fact that you have like a token and you could use it for attestation. So now you can say, oh, you know, I want to talk to people who saw two shows or went to two concerts at this venue or you know did these two actions and I want to I want to offer them something. So maybe it's a streaming service or something that wants to target people who really love a certain genre of music. And now you can like cryptographically prove. You can say, hey, you know, no, I actually am a huge fan, you know, and I, I've been to the shows. I've here's here's the stubs. You know, so I think there's lots of really interesting things you can do with a system like this that you can't do in sort of a traditional environment. 